Okay, so now we're doing going to do a new video, and it's about birdies, birdie, birdie, birdies. Okay, so one the things some of the, some of the things that I wanted to, to to talk about as far as parakeets go is um, like I said towards the end of my other previous video, they are full of personality, and they each have their own. You know, a long time ago. Like, whenever I was a kid, I remember going to the, the flea market, the San Jose flea market that they have here in the Bay Area. And um, my parents got me bir uh, parakeets. I had three cages, and I had two birds in each cage. And I was mm, maybe 16 or something like that. I, I mean, honestly, I can tell you, I had no idea what I was doing as far as having a bird. So, fast forward, um, I, I got my job where I work right now, and then, um, I got a place, and I got a bird, and my roommate was Canadian. I named my bird Hoser. And so, Hoser was, like, the beginning of me actually learning how, learning what a parakeet actually brings into your life. Um, so when I got Hoser, I, um, I used to sing, uh, sing songs to him, you know, um, I don't know, like, have you ever made up a song about somebody's name, you know, and just like, like if you've got children, maybe you make up a name and you make a song to go with it. Um, so I used to sing songs with his name in it. And, um, so... I had a couple other birds after after Oscar passed away, or after Hoser passed away. I had a couple other birds, um, uh, and then I had a bird. Um, what was his name? Uh, so I got I had a bird named Marco, and when um, Marco, they don't seem to live very long. They they seem to live like five years maybe. Um, Taco might have lived a little longer, but I don't know what, I don't know. Ah, that's another story. So, um, so after Marco passed away, I was really, really, really sad about it. And, um, and I have several of my bird's ashes. I've had, I have them cremated. And, um, so I still have their ashes. Um, cause I'm single and I've been single for a long time and, and I prefer, you know, I, I, most of the time I'm by myself. So when, when you're by yourself, having something else to actually, like if you ha have depression, you're not feeling quite yourself, or you don't have a lot of people who come and visit you, um, they can be very good companions. And so after Mark, Marco passed away, I was like, well, I'm not going to get another bird. And I was in a, a small, I was in an apartment, a regular apartment, not in the, tr the trailer. Um, and I have a lot less room now than I did then. And so I, eventually I ended up getting another bird. And I named that bird Taco. And so when Taco was little... When he was living in the, I had him in the living room because they say they're supposed to put them in a room where um, the environment, the where the people are, you know, like where the environment is and where they can like um, kind of commingle with you, especially if you've only got one bird. If if you've only got one bird, then then you are that bird's social. So um, if you have a family, that's fine. They can get involved in being social with the bird. It's, it's a community like a flock would be. So, um, so anyway, so, um, uh, Taco developed this thing where I had him in the living room and it, he just like wouldn't stop being noisy. Even if I covered him up, he wouldn't stop being noisy. It was beyond me on how I was going to fix it. And I was really close to asking somebody if they could take the bird because it was too much for me. And so I have, I had a bedroom. I had my own, I had my bedroom and then I had the living room. So I put him in my bedroom. And so, um, I forget exactly what I was doing. I was talking to him one day 
and I had accidentally left, I think I had accidentally left the cage door open or whatever. And then I was in the living room and all of a sudden I come around the corner to go towards the bedroom and he comes flying out and lands right on my shoulder. I never experienced that with any of my birds before. So all the birds that I had in the past, it was like, man, I missed out on so much. And, but the thing you got to remember about a parakeet is that they, or any bird for that matter, they have a very small brain. And so I, I used to be concerned that if I let the, if I, if I was to be that person to let the bird out of the cage, the bird will run into a window and they will, they'll run into the window because they think they can get out. Um, and they'll run into screens, screen doors whatever it is because they don't know and if they get scared by something you don't know where they're gonna go so it was really fun having taco around um and uh he w it was just a delight because um taco would actually let me give him kisses um he didn't like my hands he would get on my shoulder or get on my head um, or, you know, fly to me or whatever. He didn't want anything to do with my fingers. Um, and I'm not sure why it just wasn't something that he was interested in. It's kind of like whenever you have, you have, say you got two, two, two of the same dog and then they don't like to eat the same thing. Um, or one likes to be petted and picked up and the other one doesn't. You know, so it's kind of like that kind of situation with the personalities of birds being similar to other animals that you might own. Um, and so, so, um, so yeah, so I used to be able to give him kisses, like all the time. And I used to tell him, I'm giving you kisses for all the birdies that I didn't get to give kisses to, you know, because that experience wasn't there with them. And I was like, man, this would have been so cool if I could have done this with Hoser and with Werita and with Pickle and um, with Marco and, um, you know, just all the other birds. So I got the benefit and experience with Taco of having a bird that gets out of the cage and is actually part of the part of your life. So um, he wouldn't. Like I said, he wouldn't get on my hand or on my finger or anything like that. So that was one thing that I didn't get to, get to have with him. Um, and so uh, I moved into, I got out of the house or got out of the apartment and I moved into a house. And it was so weird because I was scared. It was a two bedroom house. And so I, I gave Taco his, his own room. And so whenever I put them in, put him in the room... I was in the kitchen and like it was like only a couple days I was at the house and I was afraid that he wasn't because he it was just a straight shot from the bedroom to me um in the apartment but in, in the house you have to make a, a turn or you have to like he had to know where he was going um so anyways I one day I was in the kitchen it was a couple days after I had moved in and I was in the kitchen and I was cooking bacon. And you know how they have like, see like behind me, see I have the cabin, the, the cabinets. They have the cabinets there. And then there's like a little hole there. And then the stove top is there. And so I was cooking, I was cooking bacon on top of it. This fucking bird comes down the hall, from down the hall, turns around and comes under the cabinets and lands right on my fucking shoulder while I'm cooking bacon. I was like, oh my God, you gave me a heart attack. So, um, so you can like create a family environment and you can, um, give more to them and they give more to you as far as parakeets go. Um, I had, I was able to enjoy taco for quite a while and then, um, I put the bird outside and I had put the him outside before with the 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 his cage door open and um I was sitting right there with him and um unfortunately something came by and scared him and 
he took off out of the cage and I went out and tried to find him and I couldn't find him and the only thing I can hope for, I mean, I didn't find him, like, injured on the ground. I, I even looked on the roof of the house and everything. Um, I didn't find, you know, no sign of him whatsoever. So hopefully, you know, he's, like, just flying around and doing his own thing or whatever. That was really devastating for me. And then, um, yeah, so then I, I ended up getting two more parakeets. Um, a couple, like, three or four months after that. Um, and then, um, I gave one, I gave the, there the, was a male and a female, as well, Oscar and somebody else, and I got, um, I had to give the other bird away, because you have to be able, so, that bird, for some reason, that bird did not like me. I mean, normally after a while they get used to anybody, you know, you have to, you have to be able to walk into the room and the bird is not going to hide on top of the cage. If the bird is still hiding on top of the cage after a few months of having it, that bird is not for you. The bird is not comfortable with you. And I don't know exactly why she was not comfortable with me, but she was not. So I actually ended up giving her to one of my coworkers and it seemed to work out fine because I asked my coworker, he gave it to his daughter and uh, he said that she was doing fine. So um, it could have been the fact that she was, because Oscar was in one cage and she was in another cage. So maybe that could have been the issue if she wanted to be in the cage with Oscar. But I never ever have two birds at one time never never have two birds at one time um and people always tell me well why don't you get why don't you have two birds because they're going to get lonely um they need companionship you are the companionship i am her companionship whenever it comes to having a single bird in a cage and you have nothing else you have no cats you have no dogs it's just you and the bird or you ha maybe you have a family and the family is treating the bird as another member of that family and that's fine too so um so i brought i had oscar and everything was fine and then <clears throat> the pandemic came and so i ended up needing to get a, out of the house because the house was far away from my job um i was commuting long distances and um the the property value went up, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, but it also sent my mortgage up and I was doing this by myself. So I decided to go ahead and sell the house. So I came to back to the Bay Area and um, Oscar and I were here. It was fine and everything. And um, he, he had, and this is another thing that you need to know. I mean, it's, I'm sure that the same thing is true about cats and dogs. But a lot of people, they don't know about, even about cats and dogs. Okay, so um, so I'm just telling you my experiences. So um, Oscar had a, um, I guess it, it it's um, a birth defect. Um, the His beak used to try to grow underneath his chin. It would come down at a point. Because their beak is pointy at the very, very end. So it would go like this. Start to hook. Like a hook bill. And I had all kinds of stuff in there for that bird to chew on and and everything. And it didn't it didn't file it down. So I used I took them twice to the vet and they take like a little file and they file it down and everything. And so I took them I, I didn't try to take them often. I just t took them whenever I saw it was starting to get to a point where, I mean, because if it comes under, it's going to poke up under and he won't be able to eat, won't be able to open his mouth. I mean, it's going to, it's going to kill him. And so I, I took him to the vet and they came in and they said that, um, that he didn't survive. And... I told them that they were lying, that that's not true, that he was fine, and he's had this done before. 
And whenever you have something, whether it's an animal or a person, and he was just gone like that. And, but because, oh man, did I cry. I cried for days um, because it was my fault because I took him there. And then I started, when I talked to the doctor, he says, this is a, a malformation of the bird when the bird was born. And so it was probably inevitable that he would either pass away naturally um, not being able to eat or he would pass away because somebody was trying to take care of him and do the right thing for him. So, um, so I, I, and it was, I just, I couldn't understand it. I didn't understand it at all. And, um, the doctor and whatever tried to give me the cage. I said, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with that. You guys keep it, throw it away, do whatever you want. And so I left. And um, they said that they were going to cremate Oscar for me. And so they cremated him for me. And um, man, I was, a, I was a mess. I was a mess. I didn't tell anybody at work about it. Um, I just... And I, I would break down and cry and I would walk away and go somewhere at work and I would cry about it. it. It's not something that everybody knows or maybe some of you do know because you've experienced loss of an animal. And it's my family, you know. So, um, I tried, I, I, I was, I think it was like, Three or four months after that, I found a lady who hand trains um, parakeets. And she she hand trains other birds too. So um, I went ahead and I looked into it. And I got one of the birds and I brought it home. And it was really cool because you could automatically already... Because it was kind of like half-baked for you, right? She had already kind of like got the bird used to her finger and put them on the shoulder and stuff like that and she used um she used Milton spray sprays or sprigs or whatever hang on a second I'll grab some be right back so she used this stuff to try to teach them you know to get them to pay attention to what she was she was doing so this is the stuff that she used to like and they Artie's looking at me like right now, right now. She's like, "Where's that? I want some." Yeah. So, anyway, so I I got the bird home and everything was fine for a couple, like maybe a day and a half, and and then if you look at their poop, you can tell that they're they're not feeling well. Plus, the bird wasn't. The bird wasn't being the way that she said the bird should be. He was running away from me, not letting me pick him up after a little while. And and so I contacted her and she was really nice. And she said that she could, she would take the bird and then try to retrain the bird and then bring the bird back to me. And then so she took the bird, she retrained, she tried, she was trying to retrain him and she told me, she, 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 was texting back and forth with me during the time period and she says she says I don't think this bird is going to be a bird that that that's going to be able to be trained to be on its own she says I think I'm going to have to put this bird as a breeder you know like or in the cage with the community birds and um so she offered to give me another bird and I was like you know what I I just I'm not feeling it right now so I waited probably about another month and a half or so. And um, this was during the pandemic when everybody was like um, kind of adopting all the animals from the shelter and stuff like that. So birds were hard to find. Um, I finally found some and they had just come in to th this one pet store that I go to called the Pet Club. And... Um, and so I went in and I advise this for everybody, um, if you're able, especially if you want to have, 
if you want to make the best choice for you as as because so this is how this is how it goes with everything right you buy a car you take the car off the lot and then you have the car home and what if you don't like it it's not like you can return it so there are some things that you can return like and then but with animals it's like you're taking a chance on getting an animal and you don't even know if that animal is going to like you. You don't, I mean, like, your dog that you have right now probably might not like you. You don't know because you, you, you don't have that experience. After a while, sure, because the, it's a baby. So after a while, sure, they'll get to know you or whatever. In some cases, but in other cases, it's... It's the same way with, with the bird that I that I had that didn't care for me. It's a situation where you don't know unless you spend time. So what I did was, in the last few purchases that I made, whenever it comes to birds, is I, I, I went to the to pet club, and they had boys in one cage and girls in other in another cage, and I saw two birds out of all the birds that were in the cages and I wanted to get a boy. So, um, two birds and watching, you just watch the way Artie, come over here. Come on. Come here. You want some? You want some? Come here. So you watch the birds and you see how the birds are, um, and how they play with each other and um how uh, lively they look and how clean they are um and you just spend some time with them so i spent a little time with the two that i want was com coming to the idea close to that i wanted to purchase Artie, over here and um so then i went home and then um i went back the next day because i still wasn't sure whether i wanted to do it and then I, I, I had to purchase everything all over again anyways. Because I left the cage over at um, the vet. So um, I went ahead and I purchased the stuff. And then the, the next day I went over and I got her. And um, it's so funny because um, I brought her home. And she would let me put my hand inside the cage. And she would sit there and she'd let, that, let me have the door open. No, leave that alone. Come on. No, leave that alone. You're not touching my stuff. And, um, so I, I, so I covered her up. I covered her cage up and then I went to work and I came home after I, I uncovered her, of course, whenever I left for work and, um, and I, and whenever I got back from work, the cage door was open. And I had not closed the cage door from the night previous. And so I was like, uh, initially I thought it was a boy. So her name was Arthur. <laughs> so I was like, Arthur, 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 like screaming and yelling. And she was sitting up there, right up there. She was sitting right up there looking down at me. I'm like, why are you screaming? You know, so I was like, oh, fuck. So, I mean, she's been getting in and out of the cage ever since. And it's just like one of the things that just kind of happened. And it's, you know, it's not something you can, you can force. Because Oscar never wanted to get out of the cage. I left the door open. And tried to bribe him with treats. That bird was perfectly happy being inside that cage. He, he didn't care to be outside of the cage. I gave him all kinds of toys and all kinds of different things to chew on. And he was very, very happy bird being inside there. Um, Artie. Come on. You want some? Come over here. We're, we're, ta we're talking about birds. You don't want some? You don't want some? She gets very... Okay, so, I mean, yeah. Okay, so that's a nice part of having a bird. Okay. They poop everywhere. Be aware. They poop everywhere. And, yeah, it's ridiculous. She gets into everything. It is like having a two-year-old. 
maybe even not even close to a two-year-old. Um, she gets overly excited about stuff. So she, she bobs her head, head up and down like that. And then, and then like whenever I, ha so I have this, the, the militant spray. Oh, where's the thing? So I have the militant spray right there. It's little tiny seeds. This is, where's the bigger one? Where did I put it? Okay. So this is what it is. And it's little tiny seeds. This would be the equivalent equivalent of giving them chips. Potato chips. Like bad stuff. So this is fattening for birds. So this is not something that you want to use for a regular diet for them. This is something that they get only for a treat. Only once in a blue moon. And then she gets, she'll get really excited sometimes. And she gets like, tries to bite my fingers. And they will bite really hard. She's eating it right now. They will bite your fingers really, really hard. And when she gets overly excited, she like stabs my finger with the tip of her beak and shit. I'm like, I don't need to be so aggressive. She really likes this and they will eat it as a, they, and they will forget about their food. If you give this to them all the time. And I try different foods with her. Uh, she likes chicken. Um, and she likes, uh, well, she likes chicken and she likes my ice pops. Um, she's loving this. Let me see if I can turn this around so you guys can see. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. There we go. So, yeah, she's enjoying it. Okay. All right. Okay, so I think I think that's pretty much sums everything up when it comes to um the parakeets. She keeps me on my toes, but she also keeps me company, and um I think I do the same thing for her. And yes, she still has the stupid blueberry stain on her forehead. I don't know when it's going to go away. And yes, that's her butt you're seeing. Um, I don't know. I don't have a clue as to when that might go away. Honestly. Um, I, I'm assuming that her feathers are going to have to fall out before that happens. And she just got a whole bunch of her. She just got a whole bunch of her feathers replaced for the spring. Artie, you don't need to mess around. Yeah, she's trying to get me by looking in the in, into the camera. Come on, come on. She loves my watch because she can see her face in it. Anything that she can look into and see her own reflection, she's very happy about. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to let you guys know a few things about birds, uh, about parakeets, and um, keep their houses clean, keep their water clean. Their food fresh, you know, change their food every couple days. And then, um, you know, just try to be interactive with them. Try to do things and show them things. And they're curious, but, but also watch out for them getting scared really easily. They have little teeny tiny hearts. And if you scare them, you can kill them. They'll just drop dead. And that's what ended up happening to Oscar. Is because his little heart couldn't take it. He got overly excited when they were trying to trim his beak. And that's why he died. So, if they get scared, they could take off. Run outside. They could get, they could get scared. They could take off. Run. Hit a window. They break their neck. They're gone. So take care of them like you would take care of your own family members and, and, your, and your children. You know, I mean, because they're living and breathing, breathing too, you know. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. See you. Bye-bye.